Welcome back again to Freedom Diggers Metal Detecting. Jim here with some more educational and entertaining content to help you succeed in the metal detecting hobby. Today's video is about seated metal detecting hunt events. And this content was requested by my subscriber, Kyle W. If you have any suggestions for content that you'd like me to cover, drop a comment and let me know. I'll do my best to get it out there. All right, let's get started. So first off, what is a seated hunt? A seated hunt is kind of a form of competitive metal detecting where the event organizers plant coins, tokens, things like that in a marked off area and then we go out there and we find them. It's a lot of fun. So first off, you want to be well prepared for the event. You want to make sure that all your stuff is in order. Um, naturally, you're going to bring a metal detector, right? Well, don't bring one that you're not familiar with. If you just got a new machine, this is not the place to be learning how to use it. Bring something that you have a good understanding of and you're comfortable using and you know how to set it up. It's also a good idea to bring a spare detector just in case of a mishap, like your machine starts to malfunction and that happens to all of them. I don't care what brand you got. All of them have their share of issues. They're made by humans, right? Could also get broken. I've heard of people setting their metal detector down to dig a target at one of these events. And next thing you know, somebody walks by and they step on their arm cuff or something and break it. So be ready for any mishaps that happen while you're out there. On that note, it's a good idea to bring one of those emergency metal detecting kits that I mentioned in one of my other videos with a few little spare extras in it, particularly a spare coil bolt, maybe some extra batteries. Speaking of batteries, make sure that yours are ready to go. If you have rechargeables, charge them up good. Maybe get your hands on a cigarette lighter battery charger as well so you can be ready to roll. If you're still using the old double A's like me, bring some extras with you. Make sure you have fresh ones in your machine. Don't go there with ones that you've been hunting with, you know, for earlier in the season. Put a fresh set in. All right. Bring with you some snacks and drinks. These things often have concession stands or still food trucks or the event organizers are going to throw some hot dogs on the grill. But just in case that falls through or gets a late start and you get the hungries or you're thirsty, bring something to cover you on that aspect. Another good thing to bring, of course, is sunscreen. Almost none of these events are in a place where there's shade. So you want to make sure that you're not going to end up looking like a lobster and have a painful sunburn to deal with as your main memory of the event. Bug spray also for obvious reasons. You don't want the mosquitoes or the ticks getting you. I would also suggest getting some Sawyer's permethrin and treating your clothes with it. I mentioned that in another video also. Okay, a good finds container. You really don't want to be chucking your finds into your pouch that you're wearing that day because you're going to be up and down a lot and you could lose them. Choose something that's easy to open and close. Doesn't have to be really huge that you're not going to lose. Good idea. Okay. For digging tools, a lot of people like to bring a full-size shovel. They'll be out there with the raven or the grave digger or the root slayer. And that's, that's fine, but that's a lot of extra weight to be dragging with you around. And it's actually, in most cases, not even necessary. These coins and stuff are not going to be buried super deep at one of these events. Most of the time, a hand digger is going to do you just fine. 
you do really want a shovel, I'd suggest getting like a short handled one. Easier to lug around. You might want to bring a spare pinpointer too. Uh, on the note of bringing something spare. Put your name and phone number on a little scrap of paper in that battery compartment. So that if you lose it, someone will give it back to you. And you got a really good chance of that at a detecting event. Detecting folks are... By and large, they're honest people. They're good people. All right. And, of course, your pouch. You want to bring that, right? I wouldn't bring a brand new one, though, because they're stiff. It's going to be uncomfortable. Bring a good broken-in one, you know, one that's filthy and beat up. All right. Prior to the event, you might want to, if you don't already know how, practice... Um, pinpointing without using the pinpoint button on your machine. If you keep hitting that button to pinpoint targets, you're wasting time and you're wasting battery. So learn how to locate the target real quick, just swinging over it. They're going to be shallow once again. If you need a little help with that, I got a video on that too. How to pinpoint with a double D coil. It's definitely a time saver at one of these events. Okay. Day of the event. You're going to want to get there early. Don't show up 10, 15 minutes prior. Get there a good hour early. You're going to get a better parking spot. It's going to give you a chance to get your gear ready and walk around and maybe meet some of the people. Another reason why it's good to get there early is because quite often they use, like I mentioned earlier, tokens. And these tokens, they're good for prizes. Like if you find this kind of token, then you're going to get a silver dollar, things like that. Um, a lot of times they use like a regular U.S. nickel that's painted green or purple or whatever. Um, they might use a metal washer. You just don't know. It's good to try to find out so that you don't skip those targets. I've even seen events where they use a pull tab that's painted a certain color just to force us to dig the evil ones. Okay. You're going to want to run your sensitivity on the low side. Again, stuff's not deep. But another reason why you don't want to run it too high is because there's going to be a lot of people around you and it's going to cause interference with their machines and you're going to get feedback from their machines and everything. So you don't got to run it up real high. You're definitely going to be running it a lot lower than you do when you're just out hunting by yourself or with a buddy. You're going to find stuff, believe me. I really wouldn't use a super huge coil. They tend to make your machine nose heavy. Just your average size coil. I wouldn't go with a real small one either. Most machines, they got a standard 10 or 11 inch coil. That's perfect. Okay. Once that starting horn or bell or person yelling goes off, a bunch of people are going to go running out into that arena to try and scoop up everything they can get. They're going to be swinging like mad. They're going to be swinging for the moon. Don't do that. You want to move fast, but you don't want to move too fast. You want to swing your coil flat, nice wide strokes, wide swings, so you don't miss anything. Um, and you want to definitely not be swinging like a grandfather clock pendulum. You're going to miss a lot. You don't need to get out there and go crazy and be swinging for the cheap seats. Be methodical, but efficient. All right. Now, a lot of times these events, they'll have breaks in between. They might have like a first hunt in this area and another one in that area. Take an opportunity between these, you know, parts of the, of the event to uh, hit the privy, you know, the porta potty. You don't want to be out there with a full bladder, be real uncomfortable and annoying. 
And if you end up having to leave and go and sit on the pot, everybody else is going to clean house and you're going to miss out. So make sure you do that. It's a good idea, too, to find a buddy to pair up with. Uh, maybe a month or so prior to the event, get out there on social media on the different Facebook groups. For instance, uh, Michigan Freedom Diggers Metal Detecting. There's a shameless plug for my group. And mention you're going to this hunt event and see if anybody wants to hook up with you there. Or maybe even be a travel partner, you know. It's good to have company. That's a good idea. And... Take the time to maybe meet some of the personalities at the event, too. A lot of times the big names attend these. You might meet Nugget Noggin or KG and Ringy, uh, Heath Jones from History Seekers or Sergeant Whitey. It's cool to talk to them people. You know, they're celebrities, too. Metal detecting celebrities, one of my favorite kind. <laughs> Don't get discouraged. A lot of people, they get discouraged. If they don't find a lot of stuff right away, they, they get kind of bummed out. They might get a little upset. And that's just going to take away from what it's about. It's about fun. Have a good time. If someone's walking around bragging about how they found all this stuff, there's a good chance they didn't. People like to try to brag. It's just like any other sport or hobby or whatever. There's going to be fish stories going around. Don't get all wrapped up in that. The majority of people that go to these events do not find enough stuff to pay for what they spent to attend it. It's just the way it is. So, I'm hoping that this video has been helpful to you. If you like it, if you like the content, and uh, you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, hit that, give me a like button, and of course hit that notifications bell so you don't miss anything else. I hope everybody is enjoying their time out in the field, regardless of where you're hunting. And I want to remind you to make sure to keep it dig free or die by digging responsibly. We'll see you next time on Freedom Diggers Metal Detecting. Thanks for watching.